Hi everyone, welcome to my 18 week pregnancy vlog. I have the phone precariously balanced on a kettle. Um, slim pickings in here. I've tried to do books and then now I've done a kettle. Um, I was in that room trying to shoot it in there, but I looked like a dead person. So <coughs> that didn't work. And then I kept getting interrupted. So I was like, all right, kids are gonna watch show. The show is on, Peppa Pig is on, Bodie's on his Nintendo Switch, shut both doors, fingers crossed that I won't get interrupted. So, hi, this week, 18 weeks, 18 weeks plus four days today, I am sitting in my hotel room, I've been here for a while now, um, has it been a week and a half, something like that, that I've been in this little town here in Estonia. I, uh, we've been COVID shut down for the last five days. I've been in quarantine. Um, I had a close contact with someone who had COVID at work. Actually, it was the closest contact I've had throughout the whole pan um, pandemic. So actually was like, oh, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen now. Like I'm going to get it now. Um, and then I was reading all these articles that it's actually worse for pregnant women to have COVID. Uh, they get the symptoms more severely. I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, I was, I've was i been bracing myself for the past week. I'm like, all right, when, when's it going to happen? And I've had this lingering cold, and then I started sort of bugging out, like, oh, my God, was it really a cold? Like, am I getting COVID? Is the coughing is it a part of the cold or is it COVID? Um, but then I've been having negative tests every single day. I feel totally fine. Um, and I'm going back to work on Monday. So, you know, it was a pity to shut down after three days. However, I just love the protocol. They're really safe. Um, from now on, I'm doing my own hair and makeup, which was something that we came up with that a lot of other production <coughs> in America are doing. They're just having the actors do their own hair and makeup. Um, and I hardly wear any makeup in this movie. I mean, I really just look like this. We'll have more brows because I really have to get my eyebrows tinted again. Um, so I'm just, and actually my hair is like this in the movie. So I'm just going to chuck my hair up in the mornings, put a tiny something, something on, go to work and it's fine. Um, this week has been great. It's, a, you know, at times it felt a little bit stifling because I'm not actually allowed to leave the room. But luckily enough, my kids weren't having to technically quarantine, even though I'm here with them, which is sort of odd that they don't have to stay in. But um, they did a few walks. So I still, <coughs> we still had Bodhi's tutor come and she works for eight hours a day, not tutoring that long. Um she that was just the contract that she wanted she wanted eight hours a day so I only need three hours of schooling a day for the boys um a forest only really does one hour uh so there was just all this like leftover time and I'm sitting here and so she ended up taking them out and then of course I have Susie so it was like so many people in such a small room and I really didn't need um to have both Susie and um sweet Jane who has been tutoring uh, Bodhi, but actually it meant that they could kind of tag team and take the kids outside so that I, cause I can't go outside. So I just stayed inside and I actually got a lot of work done this week. So I, I ended up working on, um, love well stuff cause I have been talking about it, but we're doing a big rebrand. So I've got that going on and then, um, talking about new blends and sort of trying out some of the new blends and discussing them with my co-director, Kate. So <coughs> worked on that this week. It's not COVID, it's not COVID. It's just a cold. Um, and then Sarah and I are doing a podcast, which is really exciting. We're gonna start doing one in the coming months when I get back to LA. And then when I'm in Australia, I have a little recording studio set up in Australia. So we have, um, we've been working on different episode ideas and sort of getting that off the ground. And excitingly enough, as you all know, I'm sure you've heard a thousand times through yours and mama, our book is coming out on April the 6th, um, which is really exciting. It's a US edition of our books and mamas, finding your rhythm through pregnancy, birth and beyond. And um, 
we are discussing our set what our second book is so we've been approached to do another book uh, and so we've been fleshing out some ideas, which has been really exciting. This week I've been working on that a lot. Another podcast idea that I'm doing with Susie, who's here with me. We're doing a bit of a true crime podcast. Um, more on that later. But yeah, like had a super productive week. And I think because I had an overabundance of help since I'm meant to be shooting and I work 13 hours a day, I had the day split up. So like our tutor nanny, uh, tutor Jane would tutor and then help nanny with the three kids, help Susie out so she didn't have all three kids on her own. And then Susie would also work as well. And so I was like, oh my God, there are three adults and three kids. Like this just feels crazy in such a small room. I actually just don't have anything for you girls to do. And then I was like, oh my God, actually, they should all go out to a playground. They should all go out and play in the snow. I'm going to get so much work done. And that's what the week has looked like. So it's been really fantastic. Um, in terms of the pregnancy, feeling great. I'm still sleeping on my tummy. It's SOS. I have no idea how to stop sleeping on my stomach. I have pillows either side of me, pillows around me. And so I feel like I'm not 100% putting all my weight down on top of her because I have the pillows there. It's just I will wake up and I'll find myself in that position. Hopefully that's totally fine. Um, I think it's okay. I, I think it's okay. <coughs> I remember this happened in the last two pregnancies. Um, so I'll just keep reminding myself to, to turn over if I ever wake up in the middle of the night, which I have been with the kids because we've all got to have this lingering cough. I just will roll over on my side. Um been feeling her so much. I just kicks and sort of rolls and I don't know if they're rolls, but definitely movements and like she's just kind of banging up against me and I'll tap back. I'll be like, so if I feel her here, I don't feel her here, but let's just pretend this is the belly. I'm like, I'll tap back and then she'll tap and then I'll tap back, which is really cute. I seem to think that I'm in communication with her through our taps. Um, and that's really, she's generally pretty awake at nighttime. The kids always fall asleep around 7.30 to like 8.15. Um, they all kind of drop off at different times in the bed. And then I'm left there with this little girl and she's so active, um, and, and kind of just wide awake, right? As I'm you know, putting the other kids to bed, which I was like, oh wow, this is a glimpse into my future. Um, but I think the reality is really setting in of having my fourth baby, our fifth child together. Um, but, you know, specifically my fourth baby that I'm birthing and raising from, uh, from the moment she comes out. So <coughs> it is, it's really exciting. It's daunting. I'm nervous. I'm nervous about, I mean, I'm super chill this pregnancy. I, I actually forget I'm pregnant a lot of the time. Um, and then I'll look down and be like, that's a big belly. I'm definitely pregnant. Um, and she reminds me she's she's there. She'll she'll tap and she'll kick and she'll do her little movements. But I, I definitely feel <coughs> that I'm, uh, I'm so nervous that something would happen to her. I'm I'm starting to get that little like niggling thing in the back of my mind, which we talked about in the Kelly Clarkson show um, a couple of weeks ago. It just aired where I don't think that anxiety ever goes away from scan to scan. You're always just waiting for, is everything okay? Is, is she still, is her heart still beating okay? Does she look healthy? Um, and it's almost like a more, uh, there's, it's heightened in a sense because she was just such a like dreamy surprise and I'm so in love with her already and I've envisioned, I've been envisioning so much seeing her like wearing the same little clothes that Poet wore and like watching Poet with her little sister which is something that I always desperately wanted my whole life was to have a little sister and to actually see that made manifest in my own family with my own children and see my little daughter holding her tiny baby sister in less than six months from now. Um, it's such a dream. And then it's almost like I don't let myself fully 
experience the bliss of what's to come because I know there's still so much to get through, including the birth. Um, and just making sure she's healthy and that everything goes okay. And it's so important to do kick counts, especially when you're in your third trimester. And I just want to be so hyper diligent that I'm doing my kick counts. And my life can be so busy and full of chaos that I just keep saying, like, oh, I've got to keep checking in with her. i got to check in, make sure she's doing okay. I've been really consistent with my prenatals. I've been taking um, vitamin D because I have really low levels of vitamin D. Um, so I've been really consistent with that. And then the other thing I've started doing this week was I've started li listening to birth stories again. Not necessarily to like pick up on more information, but just to like set my mind in that zone. Like, oh yeah, I'm gonna be <coughs> I'm gonna be navigating that. Um, relatively soon. I mean, it's it's going so quick. In two weeks, I'll be halfway through my pregnancy, which is wild. Um, so I listened to Mandy Moore's uh, birth story, which actually was just really similar birth story to my first birth um, on Dr. Per, uh, Dr. Berlin's Informed um, Pregnancy podcast, which is really good. I've done my birth story over there as well. And then, of course, my favourite, Sophie Walker's Australian Birth Stories, been listening to those as well and trying to find mums who've had four births um I found like Yana Pittman's and she was like four births four vaginal births and I was like okay I want to know like what was her fourth birth like um yeah so I'm just really curious like how's it gonna go what's it gonna be like um I'm trying to prep poet I really hope that she's gonna be okay with the transition going from being the littlest to not being the littlest and the boys are so beautiful with her. It's um, I actually just ruined their fort. I'm sitting in where their fort was. They've got another fort in the other room. So we've been building a lot of forts this week. Um, I love how much they're playing with her. They just play with her so much. I, and I love, there's only five years difference between them all together. So um, I had three kids in five years and I do love that age gap because they're just so close they're into the same kinds of things watching her um be included in their play just really warms my heart and i think with forrest forrest was two years four months old when poet came he really handled it so well we definitely had a little bit of a transitional period which was normal um and i i was quite shocked that it wasn't worse he was still breastfeeding i tanned and breastfed up until um Forrest was like three and a half uh and I think that probably helped having I didn't kick him off the breast when she arrived I mean he could still nurse when he wanted to and he could see the baby nursing and they would hold hands together and um it really solidified their bond I think and now I see it now and I wonder like how much of an impact those early weeks had on their relationship because they were this like little team together, the two little youngsters together. And um, and he really sticks up for her and really includes her. And I just love the three of them. But I wonder, um, you know, whether, because the boys kind of really partnered up when she arrived. They they really solidified that best friendship. And, and Forrest was at the age where he just became, you know, Bodhi's best little friend. And Bodhi was his idol and they were sleeping in the same bed together. And I just wonder if Poet's going to sort of cling more to the boys when the baby comes um, or is it going to sort of shift her into another gear where she's like wanting to do everything with the baby, um, you know, dressing the baby, bathing the baby, helping the baby breastfeed. She's so nurturing with her dolls and her toys that I'm hoping that it will go that way. <coughs> she's about to be two in April. I can't believe it. She's going to be the exact same age that Forrest was when this baby comes, um, two years and four months. So we for her second birth, we bought her a beautiful doll, a gorgeous doll from the small folk. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Anna. Such a beautiful store. If you haven't checked it out, you should. And a little baby carrier. So we're trying to prep her um, for the birth and having a little baby sister. Anyway, I've only got 15 seconds left, so I have to wrap it up really quick. But... Um, I'll quickly show you my belly. Here it is. She's big. 
All right, and that's it from me, guys. Mwah!